welcome back to the channel. This is No Luck Trucking. I'm Matt. Liz is helping me navigate. And uh, we're starting this video off a little bit different. We are not going to a pickup. Uh, this is this is a uh, this is a mission for ourselves. And uh, I'll explain as soon as we get turned around. And, Find somewhere to park. In one quarter mile, turn left, then take the first. Just gonna right. back up next to this. Uh... Yeah, I was gonna say lots of car lights. Yeah, that's that's why I'm gonna just park next turn to left, this. Turn uh, then take the first right. Container. Can't be a fire lane if it's already blocked. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't want to park over here. Well, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just sit there. Yeah, we're definitely not going to Kohl's. Sure, somebody will let us know that the uh, windshield has a leak. All right, mission was successful. So, this is the new purchase. This is a new to me uh, Epiphone SG Prophecy. So it is pretty much the top of the line Epiphone guitar. So Epiphone Gibson, you know, standard stuff. This is like one of the more iconic shaped guitars. This is the uh, pretty much the higher line that's available right now that that is uh, not made in America in $2,000. So it was a good time. We got some uh, some goodies in there. We got a little amp for the truck. Um, yeah, it still doesn't quite feel real. Um, we made it over here. Everything was good. Man, it's a beautiful guitar. I love the, love the blue fade. I don't know exactly what they call it, but then in the uh, inlays they have the uh, abalone, and that's dyed to kind of match the color of the guitar as well. So it'll probably hit me in like five minutes when I unpack the amp and like plug it in and just noodle around with the guitar for a bit. Um, yeah, it's it's it was a used guitar because apparently they stopped making this particular model and really wanted the blue color. And we happened to find it um, pretty close to our last delivery, so we uh, made it on route. All right, pulling up to the pickup uh, it's a drop trailer. It's in this lot over here to the right. All right. Uh, so there's an entrance over yeah. there. Yeah, That's we it. make this right, and it's that first left. Okay.
and see where our trailer's at. Check-in process wasn't too difficult. Uh, so we're going through the yard and I have to back into this inspection bay. And I don't know what they're gonna do. We already, we cleaned the trailer out. Yeah, she said it, it was a wash bay, so. Let's see if they uh, want to try to sweep it up. I guess. It's clean, though. So I would hope not, but. It's not going to ruin my day. Over 25 bucks. So we should be this over to the left. Yes, it is. Cool, cool, cool. trucks do not like uh, these, these lots that are like cavernous right. didn't quite get it straight but sense uh, so he needs to check it out even though uh, we have already blown it out but uh, he needs to check it for nails as well so he has to pull up any nails that are in there and he uh, he said he would get the doors too because I was gonna open them but I was like, uh, we already blew the trailer out, man. It's clean. I don't know what else you're gonna you're gonna really clean in there, cause he has a leaf blower. He's like, yeah, I still gotta check it out. I gotta make sure there's no nails in the floor and stuff, since they floor load these tires. And I was like, true, very, very true. I was like, all right, I'll just let you do your thing. He said, yep, just back up. I'll open your doors. Sweet. got the uh, okay and we got the thumbs up that it was good because uh, the paperwork did say something about if you uh, if you brought in a dirty trailer they would charge you uh, $25 yeah I mentioned that as we were coming in don't mind me it was uh, a long unexpected day of uh, running expedited when realistically we were going to be delivering the last load sometime around now but we got it in there early is there another open spot or am i just really bad at this no no there it's okay some will say i am still bad at this but it's a discussion when you flip it around you lose your uh, the spot that you were aiming for but you just make it work I 
did. <laughs> the light pole is on this side of the fence too. Alright. So we're not going to jam the trailer into the light pole. Alright, that's good. Hey, there's our trailer. And there's a piece of wood on the ground in front of it. I'm gonna hop out so that we don't get a nail in the tire. Hey, good thing I moved that. It was like some metal on top of a piece of wood. That would have definitely torn up some stuff. It's not a, uh, it's not a bad gig. It's preloaded. Like the original pickup time started at 5 p.m. today. Um, but they sent us an email like three or four days ago saying that it was ready. So that's good. Yeah, three days ago. We, were, we weren't anywhere even close to the area yet. I didn't think we'd pick up the last one. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, it's ready. I'm like, oh, okay. pull it out to uh, even lower the handle, I think. They're jammed in here pretty tight. Well, we're hooked up, got the trailer all checked out, got everything uh, documented, paperwork submitted, questions answered, the whole deal. Uh, we're assuming we don't need to stop and check out since they gave us our paperwork and everything. So we're just going to get out of here and get down the road some, make some, uh, put some miles in today. We'll probably pick up when we stop. Uh, I don't know exactly where we're going to stop yet. We made it to uh, Joplin, Missouri, to uh, Joplin 44 Petro. Yeah, it's Petro. Uh, Liz got us there last night. Uh, it's about 2.30 in the morning. I'm going to take out and get some miles in. We have uh, 720 miles left to the delivery. I'm not 100% sure where we're going to stop for the night. but Oh, on a, on a not related note. Uh, so it was raining yesterday. And as you guys like to point out or ask, uh, if we know that the windshield is leaking, um, yes, we do in fact know because we drive the truck all day. But uh, somebody in the comments had mentioned to check the tightness of the clearance lights, which we have a visor. So it has the visor and the clearance lights are on, on the actual visor. Uh, but I noticed that there was like three streaks of water coming down they lined up with the uh, pedestals of the visor so yesterday I grabbed a socket wrench and I stepped on the step and I was able to reach the first pedestal and I hit the uh, the bolts and they were loose so I'm pretty sure that was our issue so I had tried sticking my hand back behind the panels to see if the water was coming from above the windshield seal or from the windshield seal, I could never find any water above it, so I assumed it was the window seal. But now looking at that and where the water was coming from, I'm pretty sure it's probably just the uh, clearance light because they have a little gasket where it meets the body and it needs to be tight to squeeze the gasket. So, you know, just a $170,000 truck quality problems that you would come to expect. Um, so now looking back, I mean, like I said, every every new truck that I've driven has had a leak from the windshield. So that's uh, pretty interesting if all it is is the clearance lights that you need to like tighten down again. That'd be interesting to know. So I only have one side done because it was really cold and it was raining fairly hard. Um, I need to open the hood and stand, basically stand on the motor to get the middle one. And I can get the uh, other side from the doorway again. So I'm going to 
probably do that a little bit later today. I don't feel like doing it while I'm doing a pre-trip. It's, it's cold. I just want to get that done and then uh, get rolling. But that'd be really interesting if we fix our problem. I, I would be really, really happy. And then you guys can stop telling us about a water leak that you see. Well, my drive shift is over. Uh, did about 360 miles, something like that. Uh, Liz is gonna do about the same, then we'll uh, drive it in tomorrow. But uh, while we were at this rest area, popped the hood open, filled the uh, washer fluid, and uh, we've been having an issue with uh, like fuel quality and uh, it's pulling power again. So I drained the uh, diesel out of the filter housing. There was, there was a, a small layer of water, but uh, that diesel did not look good. There was uh, particles and stuff. It, it, just, it did not look good. It didn't even look the right color, to be honest with you. Uh, so we're definitely, it's definitely time to replace the uh, fuel filter now but we need to do a pm anyways we got to get an oil changed on so we'll just have it replaced then uh but also while i was up there i tightened the other two pedestals or the uh, visor every single bolt on that thing uh was loose so uh let me see i think i screenshotted his name i gotta remember who it was that <clears throat> that told us about that man i would have I would have bet money that uh, it was the um, the windshield seal. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Phil A. Shout out to you, Phil A. I think you were right. Because, uh, like I said, towards the end, the the leaks started getting worse, and they started getting uh, in a unique pattern of three, right where the pedal stools were. So. I tightened all of them and now we're just hoping for rain. <laughs> I mean the truck needs to get washed but we're just not not going to do it right now because we're still going through some winter weather but maybe before we go home. Yeah yeah I mean that would be a good test to see if it would leak at all but I'm pretty confident that's what it was because it was just uh, it's disgusting that every single bolt was loose on there. Not like falling out loose but like all of them needed a good half to, to three quarters turn to like snug them up which uh, it's just outrageous but I mean it's almost two years on the truck that leaks the, the one leak would start after it rained really heavy or we got a pressure washed and it started right down in the middle and it would only be a tiny tiny bit and then it progressively got worse and worse and worse uh, but that started probably like four or five months into having it, right? Did it? I don't know. I as far as my memory serves me, it's been like that. Maybe it's always been like that, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I guess the other ones loosened up enough to, to leak in their own area as well. So, luckily, down by the dash, there's a channel where water gets basically dripped over here on the, the side. Um, so it's not going on electronics. I know a lot of people were concerned with that, but I did get under the dash and look. I um, mean, when I was installing the ELD, you know, I see the little uh, water drip tray. So we'll uh, update a little bit later, and yeah, Liz is gonna have fun driving. We're gonna have some breakfast, and then we're gonna roll out of here. I always get blank. Well, I got us to the Preble Rest Area, I believe is what it's called, um, on 70 East, just over the line in Ohio. So that leaves about 110 miles for tomorrow morning. Um, pretty easy drive. Stopped in Effingham, Illinois for fuel at the Flying J there. Uh, Illinois is always a good stopping point if you uh, factor in the IFTA tax. And Matt's been practicing guitar a lot, which is exciting. I 
guess he's gonna put some videos over on our other channel, No Luck Garage. That's um, pretty much the area that any non-trucking content will be posted. So keep you updated on that. So we're gonna spend the rest of the day here, sleep here, get up early tomorrow morning, run in. There's not a strict appointment time or anything, but just wanna get on to the next load. I guess we gotta call the lady who coordinates empty trailers there. She said to call late this afternoon and she would know what she had. So I'm gonna do that. Change of plans. Called Jacqueline with this uh, agency because we were supposed to coordinate getting a trailer or a load from her. But we already have two more loads booked. So she said, well, I'll be honest with you, a Saturday delivery is not looking good for getting an empty and I don't work on Saturday. So I said, what if we were able to get there this evening? Like about probably 5.30ish. She said, well that would be much better. And she gave me a trailer number to ask for that hopefully they'll have. Um, but at least if there's any issues, there are any issues getting a trailer she will be in the office um, should be in the office about that time so hoping for the best it is very cold <laughs> I think I saw snow earlier it is very cold so I have double hoodies on but that was a quick restroom break and we're gonna continue to move this load I guess just figure out parking after we get it delivered. We made it. Pretty good time. Getting close to a rush hour around Columbus. But we did make it. And I got a spot assignment for this trailer. Gotta to remember to take off our lock. And then the empty that we were assigned is here. Kind of close to the spot that I'm looking for. But um, we went the wrong way around the building. Or there were like two sides and we picked the wrong side. So now we're going back to the other side <laughs> and we'll see if we can find our spot and then there's gonna be an office that I'll have to stop in as well yeah 148 we're looking for the 200s of a mile, turn left, then take the first left. Well, note to self, uh, be very cautious with doing a double drop and hook for DLS. <laughs> that lady was so nonchalant about, oh yeah, I don't know, you might not have a trailer. Like, wait, what? It's not what we had discussed. It also does, well, no, not, not all the tandems are slid. It said on the door beside the tandems, but he didn't say anything about it. And I see it. Six six eight three one one. So we're gonna be somewhere close.